I have put together the cheapest music studio possible. Everything you need to start making music for $350, including the computer. Yes, the computer, audio interface, speakers, keyboard, and the software. So can you record songs, vocals, guitars? Yes. Make beats? Yes. Will it run FL Studio, Ableton, Machine? Yes to everything. These eyes, tied from the looking glass. That song you just heard was recorded and mixed using this $350 studio and nothing else. 19 tracks running simultaneously with virtual instruments and effects. Pretty cool, right? In this video, I'll go through everything I used in this $350 studio and I'll let you know how they perform. I'll also suggest some alternatives if you've got some extra money to spare. There's lots of advice for beginners in this video and as I go through, I'll be referring you to a few other videos I've created to get more information about different topics. If you're a beginner in music production, this is the video for you. If you're new around here, I'm Sanjay C. Consider subscribing because I have tons of videos featuring the latest music and budget gear for every musician. Let's get started. I want to talk about the computer first. The computer and the software running on it will be the hub of your music studio. I bought this computer used on eBay for $160. This is a Lenovo T430 laptop. Yes, it's a laptop, which means you can make music on the go. It's got four gigabytes of RAM and an i5-3320M 2.6 gigahertz processor. It's around eight years old. And I wouldn't recommend getting something older than that. An i5 processor and four gigabytes of RAM are the minimum specs required to run Ableton Live, Cakewalk, and FL Studio. These are digital audio workstations, the software you use to record music. And this computer works with all of them. It's also got a 500 gigabyte solid state hybrid drive, which is great for storing samples and plugins. I didn't cut corners here. This laptop has everything. Wi-Fi, Ethernet, USB ports, and it runs Windows 10. The Lenovo T430 is pretty popular on the used market, so you shouldn't have a hard time finding one like this if you want to get the same one I have. I'll put a few links to laptops like mine in the video description. Now, this laptop ran everything I threw at it. It even played contact sampled instruments, which can be quite heavy, but it worked fine. Really surprised me. I installed the Asio For All driver, which helped things out a little. The driver is free, and I'll add a link to it in the description. So I want to get to the other devices here, but after I get through those, I'll talk more about the software I tested, all the plugins I used. Watch until the end of this video, and I'll give you a great little list of plugins to download. Oh, and if you want to get a newer laptop that will probably last you a little longer, I've listed some of the best budget laptops from $500 to $700 in a video here. Here's a side note, I recorded this song with the four gigabytes of RAM that this laptop came with, but to see if performance improved, I later installed another eight gigabytes of RAM. It was pretty easy to do. Performance was better, and that extra RAM only cost me $30. Maybe it's something you can upgrade yourself later. All right, let's talk about the keyboard next. This is the Nectar SE25. So what can this keyboard do? A lot more than you think. In addition to just playing your tunes with decent velocity sensitivity, it gives you DAW control with play, record, board, and rewind, and works very well. You can adjust the velocity sensitivity. I made it a little softer, and the playability was pretty good. You even got some pitch bend and modulation features. The keys are small, and they feel a little spongy when you press them, but hey, for the price, you can't beat it. It does a lot and I would recommend this keyboard if you're on a budget and you want some playability and dock control in one. Now, if you wanna go for something with better keys and you've got around $100 to spare, check out my list of the best MIDI keyboards in a video here. All right, how about these speakers? These are the Mackie CR3 studio monitors. They're powered so you don't need a separate amp. The CR3s are pretty small, but are meant to be near field monitors, so you'll use them close up. When I turned them on, I was surprised at the boominess of the bass. Pretty good for the size. I mixed my song just fine on these. Now, are you gonna miss some of that bottom end bass on an 808? 
yes, but for most projects, especially if you're just getting started, these are totally fine. You can't beat the price and they feel pretty well made. They have three inch woofers and 0.75 inch tweeters. The frequency range is from 80 hertz to 20 kilohertz. They have a convenient headphone jack in the front, which automatically mutes the speakers when you plug headphones in and also an auxiliary input in the front. By the way, if you've got a little extra cash, I'm gonna tell you where you should spend that extra money. Stay tuned. And if you're finding this information useful, hit the like button and leave a comment below if you have any questions. Okay, so what about this audio interface? You'll need an audio interface to record an external instrument like a guitar or a microphone. This is the Behringer UM2. It has a microphone and an instrument input and a direct monitoring feature, which is nice. It also has phantom power, so you can use it with a condenser microphone. Now, if all you need is a mic, you can replace the audio interface with a USB microphone. These eyes, tied from the looking glass. I recorded my vocals in this song with a Feedvine USB microphone, which is decent. I actually tested this one and compared it to a $1,000 microphone in a video here. Look out for a video in which I compare budget microphones coming soon. If there's one component I would upgrade, it would be the audio interface. The Behringer UM2 was the cheapest I could find, but if you're a guitarist or you wanna use a nice mic, I recommend spending around $100 on an audio interface. I've rounded up the best $100 audio interfaces in a video here, but don't get me wrong, you can make do with the UM2, but this would be the first thing I would upgrade in this setup. All right, let's talk about the software. You don't wanna skip out on this part because the software is really the hub of your studio. To keep costs low, I used Cakewalk by BandLab as my DAW, because it's free. I really wasn't missing any features of the paid DAWs, except maybe that it didn't include as many sounds. Cakewalk really has all the features, including compatibility with the popular software instruments and effects, automation, mixer controls, and editing. Now, if you prefer using another DAW like Ableton Live or FL Studio, those will work fine as well on this laptop. I even tested the machine beat making software and it worked well too. For the song I recorded, I used some of the included sounds in Cakewalk and also a bunch of free plugins. Let's talk about the free stuff. I installed Native Instruments Complete Start. Lots of nice sounds included and they ran just fine on this laptop. I also installed ADSR Sample Manager to find and play some free samples that I downloaded from Obit Sounds free as well. I used Keyzone Classics for the piano sound and the free SQ8 ROM synth plugin for some sounds in this song as well. I processed my vocals with the stock plugins in Cakewalk and just added Graylon for some pitch correction. These eyes tied from the looking glass. By the way, if you're looking for the best free plugins around, check out my Saturday news reports. I always include free plugins in those videos. So what's my final advice for putting together a studio like this? Well, two things. First of all, I was really surprised that I was able to do so much with this setup. It just goes to show that you don't need a lot of money to start making music. But a couple components made me think, well, I guess you get what you pay for. It was the audio interface, and the keyboard. Now I talked a little bit about the audio interface before and I have a helpful video about choosing a good one. I explain everything you need to know about audio interfaces in simple terms in that video. Now I'm a keyboardist, so the feel of this keyboard wasn't great, but if you just need something to lay down some ideas, it's fine. Check out some of the keyboard reviews on my channel if you want something better. Whatever you choose to do, I'll be sure to help you along the way with tips in future videos. Keep making the music you love and I'll see you guys later.